So in the previous video, we looked at the two physics principles that are very important in PET scan. Now we are going to see what actually happens when you go to hospital to get a PET scan. Okay, Miss Lee, what's mm -hmm. happening? Yeah, so if you are going to a hospital for a PET scan, first thing they'll do is they will design the tracer for your body. They will actually take certain measurements about your mass, your weight, you know, your age, I guess, and also how you metabolize certain compounds. So after some testing, they custom designed a radioactive tracer because remember, the radioactive tracer have a very, very short half-life. Today you go scan or today they make a ah, special one, special. So when we introduce the radioactive tracer into your body, most of the time by injection, you can see our friend here, poor dude is going for a brain scan. So when we inject the radioactive tracer, let's go with the classic old FDG, fluorodioxide glucose for your brain. And once this tracer is absorbed, because it is, after all, glucose or sugar, absorbed by the brain, we get that annihilation process. Wow, the two gamma ray pew, in the opposite direction. Okay, so when it comes to writing working principles for your past year question, what we want to see or what the examiners want to see is a basic understanding of the processes that has happened, starting with the tracer. So let's look at how it could look like in the form of a sentence. So we need to first talk about how we would inject this tracer into the body, okay, injected into the human body. And then we can say that it is taken up, the FDG or the fluorodioxide glucose, taken up uh, preferentially by your active tissues or your rapidly growing cancer cells. Let's say our patient has a brain tumor, okay? And the important thing here is also to mention the annihilation process. Okay, so the annihilation process here is when the FDG, basically, not, not FDG, actually, the fluorine 18, the spy compound, decays to produce a positron. We have learned this in the previous video. Okay, this positron will annihilate on contact with the electrons, producing your two high energy gamma photons traveling in the opposite direction. So remember, you can be asked to explain a little bit more about the annihilation process. For example, why do they travel in the opposite direction? How, where is the energy of the gamma photon coming from? But the focus of you writing a working principle essay is to showcase that you understand, number one, there is a need for a tracer. Number two, cancer cells and active brain cells really like this tracer and they will absorb this. Number three, there is a F18 inside the tracer that will decay to produce a positron upon annihilation to gamma photons traveling in the opposite direction. So this first part is basically describing the tracer. So just now we looked at the tracer and your tracer, the main idea is during the annihilation process, there is two gamma photon that will be traveling in the opposite direction. Pew! Now we're going to look at the detection. How do we pick up these gamma photons and what do we do with the data? So you can see this fancy ring here. Once the patients, once we know that the patient, uh, the tracer has reached the patient's brain, we're going to put the patient into a machine. And the machine basically consists of a ring. This looks like a ring, right? It's a ring of gamma ray detectors. Duh. So gamma ray detectors is to detect gamma rays. So during the annihilation process, we'll have a gamma ray traveling in this direction and then another gamma ray traveling in this direction. So it will activate these two detectors. It's the activated gamma ray detector. And when it activates, this is when we know, hey, 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 hey. Somewhere between these two lines lie an annihilation event. Somewhere between these two lines lie an annihilation event, which also happens inside the tissue that we want to study. Your brain tissue has absorbed the FDG. Inside the FDG, there's a fluorine 18. Fluorine 18 causes this gamma to simultaneously hit and ping these two activated detectors. So when we reverse back the reasoning, definitely on this line, there is a tumor. But teacher, this line is a very long line. Is the tumor here? Is the tumor here on the forehead? Is the tumor here at the back of the brain? Well, in order to get accurate data, what do we do uh, in, in experiment? We take more we readings. Need another line. We need another we line need another and see line. where they intersect. Ah, so the thing is, of course, there's not only one positron, right? There are like many, many positrons because, you know, these are all atoms. So probably very soon after that, we will get an opposite ping in the opposite direction, maybe something like this, because the gamma will shoot out this way. So somewhere along the intersection, we will get 
the position of the tumor. All right. So let's write that down inside uh, our working principle. So we got we to sentence this. All right. So as mentioned just now, we are talking about gamma photons. And gamma photons, they penetrate the body very easily. It's as if your body is not there. Okay. And right now, what will happen is we will put a PET scanner, positron emission tomography scanner, of circular ring detectors. So because this design is so important, you must mention in your explanation or in your description that we have a scanner of circular ring detectors. Don't just say put it inside a detector. It's not, it ain't no normal detector, yo. It's a circular ring that looks like a fancy crown. Okay? So we will ping, but don't use the word ping. We are going to detect the gamma rays photons simultaneously. Okay, so we are going to be able to activate two simultaneous ones, and this is known as the coincidence detection. All right, coincidence detection. And uh, you might be thinking, teacher, you know, when it comes to coincidence detection, right? Let's say we look at this picture, we have this patient here, and then we ping sensor number one and sensor number two, it feels like sensor number one will ping slightly earlier than sensor number two because the distance traveled by the first gamma photon, let's say I call this gamma one, is a little bit shorter than the distance traveled by the second gamma photon, let's say I call this gamma two. Then I'm like, well, speed of light, right? It's a photon. It's traveling so fast. The extra few cm of human tissue doesn't really register, but we do have a tolerance window very short of 5 to 10 nanosecond. Okay, so the important thing to mention is since it penetrates the body easily, we have a ring detector around the body part that we want to scan. And if there is simultaneous detection, meaning we hit them in the same direction, okay, this is coincidence detection. All right, so then we draw that straight line. So the line between two simultaneously, so the simultaneous word is very important because, you know, sometimes random things can happen and certain detectors will be activated because there's background radiation, all sorts of things are happening inside the detector, inside your body at the same time that we don't care about because there are different tissues that's also digesting glucose. So we only care about the ping that happens or the activation that happens at the same time. So you will call this the line between two simultaneously activated. Please don't use the word ping. I say ping because I'm a millennial. CIE, no, no. Activated. <laughs> don't, don't, don't be like me. Activated. I am the student that never writes the keyword and lose marks. Don't be like me. Write the keywords. So simultaneously activated gamma detector is known as the line of response. Sometimes I use the short word, short term LOR. Okay. So this uh, gamma ray detector, gamma photons that do not arrive in pairs are ignored. Okay. So I want you to look at a few other types of detection that can happen inside the ring detector. Of course, the first one is the normal coincidence. This is 180 degree. This one is, this is the actual data that we want. This is yes. Okay. But sometimes due to scattering. So if you remember in quantum physics, whenever we have a uh, gamma photon and then it hits an electron and then one will go in this direction, the gamma photon will go in this direction, and then the other electron will go down in this direction. So due to scattering, sometimes it will change direction. This one, we have to ignore. Because if we take the line of response, you know, we do some coordinate geometry, and we find the, the straight line that connects this coordinate and this coordinate, it kind of makes no sense, because I don't even have a patient on this line. Okay? Second one, we also ignore. So the interesting thing about the second one is we have two nucleus decay at the same time. So basically, we have two annihilation events happening at the same time. So two annihilation occur together. 
And this is because of the random nature. You know, if you study the previous chapter in nuclear physics, you understand that normally all nuclear reaction is random. So this one is normally due to random nature. Random nature of the radioactive decay. So there's going to be a lot of activation of all kinds of detector and I guess in real life it's quite a mess. Ah. You got the actual one that you want, which is the left one on the left side, and you got all these other nonsense that can appear due to scattering or just wrong coincidence that you do not want. So we need to ignore those. Well, we to do some data filtering that the computer will have to do. Let's go write it down on top there in our notes. So gamma photons that do not arrive in pairs are ignored. We try our best to clean up the data. Uh, other simultaneous detection that are made at different angles, uh, which is wrong. Not the it's not the the coincidence we're looking for. Okay, uh, where the position of the source of tumor. Okay, where is that? Ah, uh? ah, it's at the intersection of two lines of response. The correct intersection. That's the one we want. Okay, so if we go on to the picture again, you can see uh, a little bit. The first one, like Miss Lee mentioned, is 180 degrees apart. The path of the two, what you call it, the two gamma ray photons, 180. If you draw an angle for diagram number two, you will see that that's a bit lesser already. So a little bit like maybe, I don't know, what angle is this? Uh, eight, uh, 120? I feel like it's 120. Okay, 120 degrees. And the third diagram is, I don't even know what, <laughs> you just cannot, it's just two completely different line it's of like uh, emission. It's like the detector thinks that this two is on, so they draw the line here. Yeah, but it's not the correct one. They, ah, never mind. It's okay. So that's when the, the detector is confusion. So that's what we <laughs> mean when we write the sentence where they are at different angles. Mm. That one we don't want. Mm -mm. So yep. when we have lots of lines of response and of course not just one location where this occurs, you could just draw many, 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 many lines. That is just for one position in the brain. Okay, so Miss Lee will draw a few more lines just for that one spot. It's the draw spot. One more. Yeah. Just one spot only. Yeah, because that is where the tumour is or that is where we have high activity. Lots of glucose. The cancer cell is just eating the glucose. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep, yep. So all that information, I mean, the more lines we get, the better we can pinpoint who... Who is the one releasing so much uh, gamma radiation? Okay, so here, Missy Joe, I don't know how many lines already. That is for one spot. But your brain is big. There are many spots in the brain. So we have to take many, 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 analyze many, many points. And across the entire body, so there's a combination actually of many images from different, different angles, different, different pairs, different, different locations. Everything all combined to form a 3D image. You can form a 3D image if you want to. Yeah, and then we can rotate and view at different angles. So here are some 3D images we found on the internet that you can look at to see how a 3D PET scan image would look like. Yep. So as you can tell, there's a lot of brightness that's happening here. And this is a 3D image because we can flip and rotate it depending on what we want to stare at. So this is a case of a patient with liver cancer. So I don't know whether you can tell, you can see the triangle shape of the liver here. And this red color shows many, many annihilation events. A lot of line of response, gamma, gamma ray detection coming from this part and this part and all these red color spots of the body showing that, you know, this patient has a liver with a cancer that spreads. Here are some other images as well, also 3D. This is an example of breast cancer, all right? So you can see there's a really hot spot right here on the shoulder because a lot of, again, if you do bio or you understand a little bit about the human anatomy, a lot of your lymph nodes and your memory glands is connected underneath your armpit. So it's like right here, hot spot. So there's a lot of, you imagine this person that the ring is around his, 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 sorry, the ring is around her shoulder. And then you will be able to see that a lot of line of response is coming from this part. And the interesting thing is you also probably notice there's some colder responses around the body because this is injected into 
into your tracer. The tracer actually travels throughout your body. You will notice that the brain is also very hot because we are thinking people. So whenever we are awake, we are conscious, our brain is actually very active. And you would also notice that the bladder is also a bit full because, you know, we'll pee out a lot of the tracer. It won't stay in your body as it should not. This is another one. This is ovarian cancer that has been metastasized or basically quite bad. It starts from the ovary, a lot of activity. Red color is large activity. So normally on a PET scan, we would expect a lot of activity in the brain, but we're not, we're not necessarily always looking at the brain. Any kind of abnormal growth in the body will absorb a lot of glucose, causing that high activation red color. So let's go back to where we started our PET scan journey. So the PET scan is positron. It's in the name, my dudes. Emission tomography. So, of course, the positron here is to represent your beta plus annihilation event. And then the tomography is to show the 3D image. So we started this journey by looking at certain pictures of the brain. And when we can build pictures of the brain, see it's another 3D image that we can slice at different, different places. And you can even see for a coma, comatose patient, there is almost no brain activity. Normally, you watch the drama video, then the doctor say, oh, no, the patient got no brain activity, coma. This is how it looks like in a CT scan. Someone that is minimally conscious, probably asleep, deep sleep, that's very green, no activity, fully conscious, your brain is moving. Of course, we can adjust the sensitivity to pick up different detection. And because of this, we can actually, we have actually done a lot of research and scanning onto the human brain to understand mental illness better. Okay, so as you can see, someone with uh, OCD, is plagued with OCD, the prefrontal cortex, which is the front part of the brain that is very involved in organizing stuff and being very particular and meticulous about detail is fully on fire. Whereas a normal brain is just somewhat on, oh yeah, I should probably put this back in the right place. Whereas the OCD brain is just, I need, I need this to be like that. And you can see that the, it mentions here that this shows that there is a very high glucose metabolism. So a lot of sugar. All right. The anxiety brain is also have also have a lot of activity because people with anxiety are normally people who have a lot of uh, fear driven things and constantly feel unsafe in this world. So Alzheimer's is another one. You can see that there is a it's not that there's no brain here. OK, there is brain tissue, but no activity or very little activity in the tissue because very little glucose is metabolized. So a normal brain, this one, there's mild cognitive impairment. And then as Alzheimer's progress, you will get the brain actually darkens. All right. So we actually can see a lot of mental health uh, or problems with the brain and we can study the brain better when we can do PET scans and also all the other medical scanning. We are in sort of like in the journey to understand the least understood organ in the human body, which is your big brain. So don't forget in this PET scan journey, besides describing the role of the radioactive tracer, the annihilation event and the working principle about the ring scanner around the parts of the body that you want to scan, this is basically the focus of our PET scan. That's it. How's okay. your brain today? Take a break if you need to. Bye-bye. Yes. Go and think how your brain might look like. Okay, I think that's all for this video then. See you in the next one.